Hey everybody, it is late at night and I am Norman. It is the beginning of the year, so it's that time again, the state of the collection. I have quite a few watches, so I'm going to break my state of the collections down into a few different videos. So be sure to stick around till the end of this video when I'll let you know which one's coming up next. Tonight we're going to be looking at my shelf watches. So I have two watch boxes, one for my primary collection and one for sort of my secondary collection. The primary watch box has 12 slots in it and the secondary has 24. So there isn't room for everything in these boxes, which means I have watches that sit on the shelf. That doesn't mean that they're necessarily terrible watches, I just don't have room for them. And here are all the watches laid out, so you can see them all. Alright, so let's take a close look at each of these. Alright, so we'll start with my swatches. Here we have one of my new gent swatches. And all but one of these new gent pieces is probably going to be going away. They look great, but they're so large. How large are they, you ask? 41 millimeters, which for a swatch is pretty big, and they just never quite fit right. I bought these watches back when I thought that the regular gents watches were too small. This one here, as you can see, is quite legible. Not really, but I do love translucent watches, so that's why I got these. My second out of three new gents watches is this one, which is just a variant of the other one with the silver ring on the inside. And I have them on pretty unique straps. I had to hunt for these. So let's see what these new gents look like on the wrist. Let me take off the Dolce Vita. And here is one of the new gents on my seven inch wrist. And you can see it's pretty large. And it just doesn't quite wear right. You can see how it's kind of sitting weird on my wrist. Let me adjust that. Yeah, see, even after I twist it, yeah. These have just never really worn that well, so I've never had them on the wrist very much, even back when I first got them. So, yeah, they're probably gonna go. The third new gent swatch that I own is this one here. This was a gift from my wife. I have it on a gray strap, which looks pretty cool with its black case and everything. There's something wrong with the date. So when you're setting the time, the date window kind of clicks and acts weird, but it still works. So I like the Bauhaus minimalism of it. And the strap is great. It's so soft. But yes, this one is also huge like the other two. Here is one of the first swatches that I bought. When I started watch collecting, I had some way back in the school days. So this was the first one since those. And this one's pretty fun. The crystal itself has some painted markings on it. That ring there. And it has a dark translucent case, which is cool. And I love these straps. Way back in the day, these were the kind of straps that I had. Then, this one is not a swatch strap, so it's a little bit wide, but it looks pretty much just like the old school ones did. And this is a mystery dial. The hands are just kind of floating there. It's pretty fun. This one here is also one of the swatches that I bought quite a while ago. So it is one of the first ones that I got as a collector. And what's fun about this one is it kind of looks like uh, the aesthetics of Tron Legacy with that white ring around there. It would be cool if that ring was plain, then it would really look like that. And this is on a ribbed strap. I also love these. Yeah, this watch is great looking. I love it. I've inherited a couple of swatches and this is one of them. The strap that it was on was pretty aged and not so good, so I put it on this strap. And what's cool about this one is instead of a date wheel, it changes colors every day. 
pretty clever and fun and artsy. And it is pretty tough to tell the time those hands vanish. But it has a cool artsy 80s vibe. And I mean, this is from the 80s or 90s, so yeah. Looks pretty crazy on this strap. Here is the other swatch that I inherited. And this one is a mystery dial. And what's crazy is it has the date window way up here between the 10 and 11, and it has a bubble over it. This is a really cool swatch, and it's on an absolutely brilliant watch strap. Very similar to that gray one that I have. Very soft and comfortable. Yeah, this swatch is super cool. In fact, let's look at this one on the wrist. Yeah, look at that. That is cool. And this strap is just amazing. And if I remember right, it was really cheap too. I think it was like $10 or something. But I love that swatch. Here we have the black variant of the one with the white ring around it. And this one is also pretty early on in my swatch buying. This was back when I was able to get them from a site called Squiggly, which has since renamed itself and no longer has any swatches available. This one is pretty much impossible to read the time on, but it looks pretty cool. It looks like the clear case is starting to get a little yellow. That's the only downside of these. And another one of these straps. This comes from a newer line that Swatch put out, and this was also a gift for my wife. This one is just amazing looking. I love the colorway, and look at that font. Super Bauhaus. I feel like the ticking on this one is louder than some of the other ones. And the crystal is a little bit thicker on this new line. Another brilliant swatch. And the Turquoise Bay, the Haunted Watch. So this one works fine unless you're wearing it and then it randomly stops. You can see that the case is yellowed. I'm probably going to be buying another Turquoise Bay because I love this watch. And I would like to actually be able to wear it. That crystal looks so good. Especially in the sunlight and stuff. I've always loved the Turquoise Bay. Way back in school, I remember seeing it and just loving it. And it looks even cooler than I remember it. And the latest swatch that I've added to my collection, the High Tech. I absolutely love this swatch as well. That is so cool looking. Yeah. All right, so now we'll look at a couple oddball watches. Here we have the Projects watch. This watch is so artsy and fun. And it's 36 millimeters, if I remember correctly. It's a nice small size. And with those hands all fat like that, they kind of make interesting visuals, depending on what time it is. Like right now, before that peaked out at all, it looked almost like it was just one hand and a seconds hand. And this watch is really well built too. It feels nice and sturdy. The strap is really comfortable and flexible. And there's even some fun keepers on there. So far I'm really impressed with Project's watches. They're super creative and unique. And at least this one is really well made. Here we have my dirt cheap doctor's watch. I've worn this a few times. Mainly kind of bought it just out of curiosity. And I mean it looks great. But unfortunately, I feel like this is a watch where it probably should have been at a higher price point and just done a little better. Sometimes a really inexpensive watch, you can just kind of tell that it is. And this is one of those, sadly. I mean, it looks great, but you can tell that it was pretty inexpensive. Let's see this one on the wrist. It's been a little while. And there is the ultra affordable doctor's watch on my 7 inch wrist. It's definitely a cool design and the size and proportions and everything are great. The dial's fun with the two little sub dials there. And we have some more randomness. So the Reader's Digest was in my secondary watch box for a while, but I've moved it out to make room for other stuff. I don't really wear this watch, but I do like it. It looks pretty cool. Super vintage size. I think this is from the 80s and it's a Wittenauer. So even for promotional stuff like this, Wittenauer was coming up with really great designs. Back in the day, they are not anymore. I just love that dial though. 
And it looks great on this faux lizard strap. Yeah. And probably the most surprising watch in all of my collection. Yeah, I have one of the monster old Invicta watches. This thing is just insane. And it's been years since I've worn it for anything other than just costumes. I did a party where I was dressed up all hip-hop style, 1990s hip-hop. And this was perfect for that. This was purchased on a cruise ship. I was there celebrating my wife and I's anniversary, and at that time I wasn't really collecting watches, but I liked how this looked like a diving helmet. I was very much obsessed with nautical stuff, so I bought this and it is not at all comfortable to wear. The entire time I was on the cruise ship, my wrist was just in pain, but I can't bring myself to get rid of it. So, so far it's still here. And here we have a piece that was gifted to the channel. I love its aesthetic. It's just an inexpensive mechanical watch. I think it was purchased at a swap meet or yard sale if I remember correctly. But I put this on the time grapher and it didn't even know what to make of it. It couldn't even get a reading at all. So this is one of a couple watches that hopefully at some point I'm going to try taking the movement apart and putting it back together. And hopefully I don't ruin it, but it does look pretty cool though. And I have a few pieces that don't even have straps at the moment. This is another watch that was a gift from a viewer. Thank you so much. And this one also will be a guinea pig for disassembling the movement and putting it back together. This one's an automatic and it looks pretty nice too. I think it's also a pretty cheap watch, or was when it was new, I'm not sure. This one feels more sturdy though, than that previous watch. Back when I first encountered vintage Russian watches, I bought this one, and I'm not sure what happened with this dial. It almost looks like somebody just printed it on a printer, which is kind of sad. This case is amazing. I'm thinking about perhaps looking into printing a dial that I've designed professionally and putting it in here. We'll see. I've designed a Bauhaus dial that looks pretty cool, kind of unique. So I may test it out on this watch. And I have my cushion case Russian watch that I bought way back when I first encountered those as well. And I really like this watch, but there's something wrong with the seconds hand. It just kind of flops around there. So when I get tools to remove hands and put them back on, I'm going to practice that on this watch. I should get those because I miss wearing this. This watch looks really good. It wears really well. And we have the Wolf Notch, which is also a gift to the channel. And this is the first time I've ever had a brand gift me a watch. Thank you so much. And this watch looks great. It's a little thick, but when you're looking at it head on, not too shabby. I'm not really into rose gold, but this looks good. Looks great on that strap. I do still have to break this strap in though. And currently the Bulova doesn't have a slot. So yeah, I absolutely love this watch. It's been on my wrist almost every day since I got it. I kind of go back and forth between this and the Dolce Vita at the moment. This thing is performing great and just looks brilliant. Gotta put this one on, right? That is so cool. Man, I love this watch. And I love this strap too. The color is so great. It's a little bit more beige than I've seen in straps like this. It's not quite as green, which I think makes it look even cooler. And I've gotten used to this part back here where it's doubled up. Doesn't bother me so much anymore. The buckle is brilliant. Yeah. So cool. This is the A17A. Awesome. Next up I have my Pagani Design Moon Watch. Yes. So glad I bought the one with the white indices and stuff. I think it's V3 or V2. I totally forget. But I inadvertently bought the one with silver indices and it just didn't look right. So that watch has left, but this one is here to take its place. And look at it on that strap. This strap's pretty crazy. There's so much stitching on it. 
It's all over the place. Yes, this watch is fun. And I still have the Dan Henry, and it is still on this amazing Vario strap. And Vario was kind enough to gift this strap and one other one to the channel. It's way tougher and bulkier and sportier or whatever than I usually go for, but man, as soon as I put it on this watch, it made this watch brilliant, which I was pondering getting rid of. And yeah, I love this strap. So I do wear this watch every now and then. It's great with the leather jacket. And we should probably look at this one on the wrist again. Yes. The strap is indestructible. And this watch looks so good on it. It really kind of tames the size of the watch. I mean, this watch isn't big, but it wears very large. Next up, we have the Back to the Future watch. This was a gift from my brother. Perfect item to put on a Christmas list because it's so affordable and so awesome. And the F91. This was an impulse buy at Walmart. I was there on an errand and thought to myself, you know what? They sell F91s in there. I should just go in and buy one. And I'm glad I did. These are so awesome. All right, so now we're getting to all my sci-fi watches to wrap up this State of the Collection video. And first up, we have the Lytronics watch. I've tried polishing up this crystal a little bit. I'll have to do some more work on it. I'm gonna have to clean this case. The pushers don't work so well. I think they're gunked up, but I rarely have batteries in this because it is a battery eater. I think last time I had a battery in here, it lasted a month, and that was with very minimal wear. So, yeah, that's kind of a problem. And speaking of battery eaters, unfortunately this one never really has a battery when I'm showing it because it also eats through batteries. Fortunately, it does have a hatch, which makes life much easier. I don't think I've ever actually done a review of this watch. I'll have to buy a battery for it and do that. It's not terribly legible because it kind of gets dark when it's on the wrist, but it looks amazing. This is a fossil watch. They did some watches with Stark, and I have to do a bit of digging. I'm not terribly familiar with that brand, but they've come up with some really cool looking sci-fi watches. Next up, I have the black one the one watch. I have three of this brand's pieces because back when I was hunting for sci-fi watches, doesn't get much more sci-fi than these. Sadly, I've tried changing the battery and I don't think this movement works anymore. So I guess this is a, a sci-fi bracelet now. I bought this one after I got the next watch we'll look at. Thinking it'd be cool to have a couple different colorways, but the next one looks so much better. This one was kind of a waste of money. I should have just stuck with the other one. Oh well. I mean, yeah, look at that blue green. That looks so cool. This watch reminds me of Space Mountain when you're standing in line and there's all the cool sci-fi hangar stuff everywhere. I don't know why, but this reminds me of that. And I think these watches take three batteries, but last time I opened them up, there was room for two and I couldn't find the third, but I'm pretty sure it does because the third powers the second's hand in the middle. And then there's a battery for each of these. Yeah. And sadly, this movement doesn't work anymore either. I guess module, not movement, but they were really cool because when the times changed, it was animated. I think the numbers kind of moved across and the new one came on, something like that. Or they rolled down, one of the two. Super sci-fi. And the last one, the one watch that I have, the binary watch. And the battery life on this one is just phenomenal. I haven't had to change the battery yet, and I've had this watch for a few years, so that's cool. This one's nice and thin, but monstrous. But it definitely looks like something straight out of a sci-fi movie. And this one is one of my two absolute favorite sci-fi watches. I still love them, even though they pretty much sit on a shelf, but man, this is a cool looking watch. It reminds me of something that would be in Robotech or something. I love that green 
and the large numbers on the display, and you can change up what's shown up here. Right now I have it set to a tide table. Let's see if I can switch it. I forget, oh, there we go. So you can have the visual display or you can have the information itself. Super cool. And this strap is really tough. The whole watch feels pretty rugged. And this battery also has lasted forever. I haven't had to change that yet. And I've had this for years as well. And this is probably the most functional of all my sci-fi watches. And it's smaller because it's a lady's watch. So it's actually human size. And it has a cool light. And this has actually gotten noticed before on the wrist. I was perusing watches in a jewelry store. And the worker was kind of tripping on this a bit. Very soft strap. This is a Nixon as you can see there. Yeah, this watch is pretty cool. I have had to change the battery once. But... We'll see how long it lasts now. I mean, with that display, it should last quite a while. Let's check out this one on the wrist. Here it is on my 7-inch wrist. Yeah. I could picture this in movies like Aliens or something. And there's a little notch on there that keeps the uh, keeper in place. These were marketed as surf watches. But I don't think they're terribly water resistant. Definitely sci-fi and definitely cool though. And definitely not displaying the correct time. I will have to fix that. So there you have it. The state of the collection. My shelf watches. The next video that I have coming up will be my secondary collection. So stay tuned for that one. Thanks for watching.